When we think of Elon Musk, one of the first things that comes to mind is his fearless approach to failure. He's not afraid to let rockets explode if it means pushing the boundaries of innovation. But even Musk has his exceptions. Take the Dragon capsule. Its traditional design is something he's stuck with, convinced it's the only real option. Enter Sierra Space, a bold company based in Louisville. That's challenging that notion entirely. So why can Sierra Space do what Musk calls impossible? Find out in today's episode of TechMap. Have you ever wondered why NASA chose a winged space plane design for the space shuttle, even though it's an orbital vehicle? Well, a big reason comes down to the people behind it. Some of NASA's engineers were trained in aeronautics, so they naturally viewed spaceflight as an extension of atmospheric flight. That mindset led to a preference for a gliding orbiter that could land like a plane rather than splash down like a capsule. This is where the shuttle's cross-range capability comes in, the ability to maneuver during re-entry and touch down on a runway. But there was more to the story than just engineering philosophy. Political and budgetary pressures played a role, too. NASA opted for solid rocket boosters instead of more advanced liquid ones because they were cheaper to develop, even if they weren't technically the best choice. In the end, the shuttle was retired after 30 years, not because it didn't work, but because it was expensive and risky to operate. The Challenger disaster in 1986 and the Columbia disaster in 2003 underscored its safety issues. Features like the shuttle's large delta wings and thousands of fragile heat shield tiles, originally added to meet Air Force demands, made the system heavier, more complex, and harder to maintain. The harsh lessons from the shuttle era pushed NASA back toward a more reliable and cost-effective design, the capsule. This return to basics has shaped NASA's later programs, including the Commercial Crew Program. Companies like Boeing and SpaceX embraced the tried-and-true capsule model, heavily inspired by the Apollo command modules. Capsules are simpler, with fewer moving parts, and inherently safer during launch and re-entry. Plus, they're cheaper to build and maintain. That brings us to the Dream Chaser, a space plane developed by Sierra Space. NASA initially passed on it for crewed missions because of its complexity and the fact that it wasn't ready to carry astronauts at the time. But in 2016, NASA gave the Dream Chaser another shot, this time as a cargo hauler. Under the Commercial Resupply Services, to contract, Dream Chaser was tasked with delivering supplies to the ISS, marking a new chapter for the winged space plane concept. Now, all eyes are on Tenacity, the first cargo version of the Dream Chaser, as Sierra Space aims to prove the design can finally deliver, literally. Since its introduction to the world, Tenacity has sparked excitement in the space community thanks to its visual similarity to NASA's iconic space shuttle, but in a sleeker, more efficient package. One of the Dream Chaser's standout features is its adaptability. Unlike the original space shuttle, which launched vertically with the help of solid rocket boosters, SRBs, and its own main engines, requiring a massive 7.8 million pounds of thrust, the Dream Chaser doesn't rely on a fixed launch system. It can be launched atop various rockets. That flexibility offers Sierra Space a big advantage. More launch options and built-in contingency plans if a particular rocket isn't available. For cargo missions, Dream Chaser tucks its wings in and fits neatly inside the payload fairings of a rocket. Once in space, it deploys its wings and continues on its journey. In the future, when Dream Chaser is ready for crewed missions, It'll be launched without a payload fairing. This is key for enabling an in-flight abort system. To put things in perspective, the space shuttle was as long as a DC-9 aircraft, about 122 feet or 37.2 meters. Its massive payload bay stretched 18.3 meters long and 4.6 meters wide, allowing it to carry everything from satellites and science instruments to whole modules for space stations. These payloads could weigh up to 27,500 kilograms, 60,600 pounds, in low Earth orbit. 
Dream Chaser is more compact, just 30 feet, 9 meters long, or about one-fourth the length of the shuttle. But when paired with Sierra Space's Shooting Star Transfer Vehicle, it can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the ISS. That includes essentials like food, water, equipment, and science experiments. And when it returns to Earth, it does so gently with a runway landing. The shuttle's interior volume, not counting the airlock, was 67 cubic meters. Tenacity offers 33 cubic meters of pressurized space when you combine the space plane and its cargo module. That smaller size makes Dream Chaser easier to handle and more sustainable in terms of operations, while also helping cushion fragile payloads during its mild 1.5G runway re-entry. A major difference between Dream Chaser and the shuttle lies in the thermal protection system. The shuttle had about 24,000 heat shield tiles, 12 times more than tenacity due to its larger size. These tiles were highly customized, built with complex curves and intricate interfaces that added massive complexity and maintenance challenges. NASA set an ambitious goal, no more than one failure in 108 tiles. But just inspecting and replacing tiles between missions consumed a huge amount of time and resources. Dream Chaser uses only around 2,000 thermal tiles, each designed to protect the vehicle from the intense heat of re-entry up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, while keeping the interior at a cool 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Sierra Space claims its tiles are both stronger and lighter than those used during the shuttle era. Each tile is 10 by 10 inches, compared to the shuttle's 6 by 6 inch tiles. That means fewer tiles are needed, which helps reduce the overall risk and simplifies maintenance. To meet modern safety standards, the TPS must withstand micrometeoroid and orbital debris impacts. Dream Chaser's tiles are built with that in mind, ensuring both cargo and potential future crews are protected throughout the mission. To enhance thermal efficiency in orbit, Sierra Space added white tiles in addition to the traditional black ones, which reflect more heat from the sun and help regulate onboard temperatures. And when it comes to bonding those tiles, Sierra Space uses room temperature vulcanizing RTV silicone. This material excels in high heat environments, making it ideal for space missions. But they don't stop there. Every tile bond is rigorously tested using a pull mechanism to ensure it holds up under pressure. Even the smallest failure could be catastrophic, so this testing is a crucial part of the quality control process. All of this reflects Sierra Space's commitment to engineering a vehicle that's not only cutting edge and efficient, but safe and reliable for the next generation of space missions. In a major step forward, Sierra Space is teaming up with the U.S. Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, ORNL, to create a next-gen thermal protection system. Their new heat shield design leverages silicon carbide-based materials known for high temperature durability and reusability. These tiles are made from a proprietary composite that's as strong as carbon fiber, but with the thermal stability of ceramics, exactly what's needed to face re-entry temperatures above 3,100 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,704 degrees Celsius, at speeds beyond Mach 17, or roughly 13,000 miles per hour. What makes this such a breakthrough? The outside of the tile resists the searing heat, while the inner layer insulates and protects the rest of the spacecraft, keeping it at safe, stable temperatures. That added safety and durability reduces the maintenance burden and extends the life of the heat shield. Massive wins for operational efficiency. Compare that to the Space Shuttle. Its exterior tiles were only expected to survive about five missions per year. Dream Chaser's new tile design? It's aiming for at least 15 missions before needing a major refresh. That's a game changer. And with NASA already contracting Dream Chaser for ISS resupply flights, this upgrade fits perfectly into their long-term mission goals. The new tiles also contribute to better commercial payload performance, thanks to their lighter weight and ability to preserve the spacecraft's aerodynamic shape, even after repeated heat exposure. Keeping a consistent outer mold line is important for reusability. 
It keeps the aerodynamics the same to allow the vehicle to fly as designed, declared Greg Larson, ORNL principal investigator. Nothing is easy. It took both groups more than three decades to design the new system. Now Sierra Space and ORNL are just at the beginning. They plan to patent the tech, then run the tiles through a gauntlet of real-world testing. Next stop, NASA's Ames Arc Jet Complex, a one-of-a-kind facility designed to simulate the extreme heating experienced during hypersonic atmospheric entry. After that, they'll work to bring down production costs using cutting-edge manufacturing techniques, getting ready to install the system on future dream chasers, including the next vehicle, named Reverence. This progress marks a huge leap in what has long been considered one of the hardest parts of building spacecraft, the heat shield. Even Elon Musk has said that making a fully reusable thermal protection system is the biggest engineering challenge in spaceflight. It's not just about withstanding heat, it's about the materials, structure, and long-term reliability. Reusable heat shields must survive re-entry temperatures that can reach up to 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit, well above the melting point of most materials. So engineers need advanced composites that won't crack, warp, or degrade, even after multiple missions. And unlike ablative shields that burn up on the way down, Reusable TPS must remain intact and ready for flight after flight. That demands materials that can handle extreme thermal cycling without suffering fatigue or structural failure. Cost matters too. If your shield is reusable but requires hours of inspections, touch-ups, or replacements after every flight, it's not scalable. The shuttle's heat shield was notorious for that. It had over 20,000 individual tiles that needed constant care. With this new tech, Sierra Space is targeting both safety and affordability by reducing tile count and streamlining inspections. And finally, there's the integration factor. A heat shield can't be an afterthought. It must fit seamlessly into the spacecraft's aerodynamic design, structural layout, and mass distribution, especially for future missions that go far beyond Earth orbit. As space companies gear up for rapid reuse and deep space exploration, everyone is chasing that perfect balance of durability, reusability, and efficiency. Billions are being poured into R&D and testing. And yes, not every attempt will succeed. But that's the nature of innovation. Even if the dream of routine space travel still feels out of reach, breakthroughs like this bring it closer, one tile at a time.